Okay, Colin, um, I'm going to review what we've done over the last couple of days, the last two lessons. Um, making some good changes. you got to remember, um, these are all ways to refine our original goal here for your game, which would be to, um, you know, get you less stuck, right? less inside uh, direction-wise and less steep plane-wise. Um, they have a challenge with coal and not plane now, but I, I still don't know a better way to refer it. So you're doing this, uh, what you call freeze drill, and I like it because you notice there, one of the things that I find easy to do is that the club and the arm there are on the same plane, and it's easy to get that back out in front of you. Here's that drop that we're working on today. I really want to get that. Uh, the irons are much better. When I, when I compare this one to uh, what happens with the longer clubs, uh, you'll see more of that, although this was that. There, there's, the, there's the drop, all right, pretty deep behind you. And there's the steep with the shaft. So our goal would be to get a little bit more out in front of you and the shaft to lay down a little bit. So I think you should work on a pull with your, with your hands, like a pull out, not a pull down so much. Or at least a pull down plane instead of that drop. Let me see. See, it looks so much better with the iron there on plane, um, more in line with your hands. So if I get you here about that high and get you there about that high, you're still stuck inside here a little bit. So, you know, a lot of improvement in a couple short sessions. So the closer we get to this plane, you know, with the hands more out in front of you, the better striking you're going to get, the more consistent striking you're going to get. Now, that's what we have to be careful of. That in trying to get the hands more out in front of you, we don't make the shaft steeper, right? But that's pretty good. In other words, this is like a double-edged sword for you. I, I guess you could say that um, it would be easy if we were just working on getting the hands in front of you or easier if we were just working on getting the club a little bit flatter in the transition. But to do both is a little bit of a double-edged sword, and that's what uh, I'd be a little concerned about. Doing it much better with the irons, but again, let, let's let's take a look here. Let's see who we've got over here. We got our boy Sergio. We know that.
Be careful of that habit you have of raising your hands too because that can get the club stuck inside of you pretty quickly. Um, Oops, I think that's a, oh, this is going to be a drill swing, probably. They don't really want to go back, do they? So here... there. Here's do go back a little further. And the plane is a little steeper. So that's where you're caught right now, right? Because we're trying to get this club to lay down a little bit, but we're trying to get the club more out in front of you. So you're about this far down. Oops, let will take that out of there. You're about this far down. And if we could get uh, that position that you have there with the longer club, particularly with the driver, I think we're getting somewhere. Okay. So at the halfway down point, which would be the arm parallel, you'd want to get the arm a little, a little bit more parallel to the target line. Let's just put it that way. So if this left arm, I can't draw it on the 2D screen, but you know what I'm saying, if it was parallel to the target line, a little bit more like that, that, that would be good. But we don't want it to be too far inside. That's pretty late, unless you got all his lag to be able to deal with it. But your irons are much better. So the idea of getting the the wrap up then on the in uh, the talking points that the the things that you want to keep in mind are we're keeping the ball get out of the habit of setting up in the bucket. We're going to keep the left thumb a little longer. We're going to have the ball a little bit forward. We're going to feel your shoulders and your hips slightly open. Okay, we're all trying to get you out of that inside out path. You're going to start in your posture, not raise it up too much. That's a little starter program for you, but you do change some angles there. So try to keep it low because higher hands is not exactly what we want there. Okay, and when you get here, we're going to try to get the club more out in front of you and on a better plane as we come down. We're pretty good. Go to your driver. Or a longer club. And that's what we want to do too. What's up? Right there, just getting a little bit being back. Let's see, uh, I've got a fairway wood here, I think I do. Well, I got this, this guy, he's a beast. That might be a good look for you. Okay, this might be a good look for you. Brooks Kepka's move. The club on this angle and the hands out over the knees already. Yeah, let's look at this one a little more closely.
That guy's a beast. See that turn through? See that left side clearing? It's a little bit of an unusual move, but what I'm thinking I could use him as a model for you is because he flattens it and sends it out. Right, so one of the characteristics, uh, pr pretty much of all the great drivers, is the ball's pointed outside the line. The club's pointed outside the line of flight, or the ball on the way down. So if we go over here, what I'm trying to get for you is to feel that. Um, with the uh, longer clubs. I, wanted to, I just want to get your arms more out of the way from your body. Shaft playing good now. Good solid delivery. And club exiting left. So everything is going to be based on that. So if we can get your hands, arms, and club a little more out in front of you and a little flatter on the downswing, I think you're, you're on your way to scratch your better golf.